Hello everyone and welcome to the I.O. 2021 session about how to drive app engagement with deep linking. My name is Ran Moore and I'm a product manager at the mobile app at Steam. For the past two years, we explored and investigated the deep link implementation process. We wanted to understand the pain points that you and other stakeholders in your company are having and how we can help you validate and improve your deep linking coverage. We discovered that deep links provide tremendous value for you and your users. However, many apps either have a small number of deep links or don't have deep links at all. So today we are super excited to announce two deep linking tools that will help you with implementation, prioritization, and validation of deep links. This will result in a much better user experience, higher retention, and new opportunities to engage your users in increased traffic to your app. I really hope you enjoyed this session and let's get started. Let's quickly talk about what are deep links. So deep links are links that can be used to open an app and send users to a specific piece of content or action inside of the app. Now you're probably asking yourself, what are the benefits of implementing deep links? So first we know that the user experience in an app is usually much, much better than the user experience on a mobile website. Second, deep links can be used in multiple use cases, such as marketing, emails, SMS, and that increases the traffic to your app. Lastly, deep links drive app engagement. We've seen that users who are directed to apps are twice as likely to perform actions than users who are directed to the mobile web version of the same content. So the ROI is much higher for both you and the users. Next, let's talk about the main types of deep links that you should consider implementing. The first type called custom schemes, and it usually has four main components. The scheme, which matches the scheme the app can handle in its manifest, the host, which identifies the domain for which the link was invoked, the path, which specifies the location within the app to open, and the query string, which is an optional set of values and parameters you can append to the URL. Now, custom schemes are platform-specific, meaning that the implementation will be a bit different for iOS and Android. Also, if other installed apps on the user's device can handle the same custom scheme, users might not go directly to your app and they will see the disambiguation dialog. This can lead to a potential fraud as other apps can try to open your links. Now I'll talk about a disambiguation dialog in a bit. The second and more preferable type of deep links called app links, and they have similar components. For the scheme though, it always has to be HTTP or HTTPS. Now how do they work? When users click on an app link, if the app is installed on the user's device, they will be taken into the app. And if not, they will be taken to the mobile website. Apple has a similar solution called Universal Links, and you can get more information about those on Apple's developer website. Now you're probably asking yourself, should I implement app links or custom schemes? We highly recommend to implement app links and not custom schemes for the following reasons. App links are more secure and specific. They use HTTPS URLs that link to a website domain you own, so no other apps can claim they own the same domain and use your links. They also provide seamless user experience, so it's a single HTTP URL for the same content on your website and in your app. Users who don't have the app installed simply go to your website instead of the app. Now, this behavior doesn't exist in custom schemes, although it's super critical for the user experience. They also let you engage users from Google search and can be used with the Google Assistant Actions and Android Instant Apps that lets users run your Android app without installing it. I mentioned the disambiguation dialog before. That is the dialog that lets the user select which app should handle the URL. As, as you can see here, it's definitely not ideal in terms of the user experience. The dialog usually pops up if the link is a custom scheme and more than one app can open this URL or if the link is an app link but isn't configured correctly. So make sure your implementation is correct. Implementing custom schemes or app links involves two main steps. First, in your app, you need to create deep links in the manifest and add logic to launch the right content. Second, on your website, you need to upload a JSON file that proves you're the owner of the domain. For custom schemes, you only need to implement the first step, while for app links, the second step is required as well. Now let's go over the actual changes you need to make to implement deep links. Let's start with your app, specifically at the Android manifest file. To create the link to your app, you first need to add an intent filter to the activity that you want to link to. Then you need to add the action view intent action so that the intent filter can be reached from Google search. 
Then add a data tag that represents the URL format that resolves to the activity. Now you can add more than one data tags, each representing a URL that can open the activity. This might be a bit tricky though, so before you do that, go over the Android Developer Guide to verify your implementation. Next, add the browsable category that is required in order for the intent filter to be accessible from a web browser, and the default category that allows your app to respond to implicit intents. So those are the required changes in the manifest. And here you see another example of an HTTPS link, where the scheme is HTTPS, and the host is www.example.com. Now in your app, you also need to read the data from incoming intents. How to do that? Simply call the get data and get action methods to retrieve the data and action associated with the incoming intent. So those are the changes you need to make to your app. As I described earlier, for uplinks, you also need to add verification that proves you're the owner of the domain. Let's see how to do that. First, a digital asset link JSON file must be published on your website to indicate the Android apps that are associated with this website. The JSON file uses the application ID or package name and the SHA-256 fingerprints to grant link opening rights to the app. Here in this example is the com.example app, and you can use the key tool command that's on the screen to generate the SHA-256. Then you must publish your JSON verification file at the location it will see on the right side of the screen. Also, make sure the file is served with the right content type, accessible over an HTTPS connection and without any redirects, and that you publish a file for each domain you have. At the Android Developer Guide, you can also learn how to associate a website with multiple apps or how to associate multiple websites with a single app. The last step is to add the auto-verify equals should statement to any of the URL intent filters in your app manifest to ask for verification from the operating system. Now, super important note here is that all your app links have to be configured correctly for the verification to work. So, for example, if you have 10 app links in your app and one of them fails their verification, all the 10 links are not approved which causes the disambiguation dialog to pop up when users click on those links. Now, I do want to talk about a very important process, the deep link implementation process. It is a cycle that has three main phases, coverage, implementation, and validation. First, you need to know what deep links are missing in your app and what is the added value from implementing those deep links. Second, you need to actually implement the deep links in your app and website. Lastly, you need to validate that your deep links are actually configured correctly. And this is a cycle because the app, website, and URLs you and your company are using are changing frequently, and you always have to implement and verify new deep links in your apps. Based on feedback we got from developers, marketers, product managers, support, and internal teams, we developed two deep linking tools that we are announcing today. Those will help you validate and increase your deep link coverage. So let's deep, deep dive directly into the tools. The deep link validation tool lets you validate either your entire app or a specific app link or custom scheme. Let's see how this tool works. First, to get to the tool in AdWords, you click on the tools and then on the app advertising hub under planning. To start the validation, you need to choose your app, decide whether you want to validate a specific link on the entire app, and then click on Validate. Here in this demo, we validate an entire app. Then you can see how many of your links won't work and the app version we validated. You can also click on the full report button to download or send the report to other stakeholders in your company. The tool performs two sets of checks. The first is a set of website checks for the JSON file on your website, and the second is a set of app checks inside of the manifest. Once we validate, at the main table, you'll have up to three tabs, one for all the domains that fail website checks. This tab is based on domains since a domain can be associated with multiple apps. The second tab is all the links that failed app checks. And the third is all the valid links in your app. Now with the domain that failed website checks tab, you can add filters and download just this table and not the full report. Now in the table, you'll see the list of domains, for each domain, how many website checks it failed. And by clicking on view details, you can see all the checks that we perform on this domain, which one passed or failed, and what you need to do to fix each failed check. 
Those checks are correlated with the deep link implementation steps that we mentioned in this session. Under the same view details page, you can click on the links under domain tab and see all the links that are associated with this domain. Moving to the second tab on the main table, you can see the list of links that failed app checks. For each link, whether it was validated as an app link or custom scheme, and how many app checks it failed. You can also click on the view details to see detailed view of all the checks we performed, which one passed or failed, and how to fix the failed ones. Important note here is that for uplinks, we are performing more checks than custom schemes, as uplinks require a different setup. And the checks are correlated with the implementation steps that we previously discussed. Lastly, at the validated links tab, you can see all the valid links you have in your Android app. And by clicking on the view link report, you can see a preview and a QR code for the landing page that this deep link leads to in the app. You can also see the related checks that we performed for this link. The deep link impact calculator tool provides a list of all the missing web URLs that you should consider implementing as deep links and the missed opportunity from not implementing those. To get to the tool, similar to the validator, you click on the Deep Link Impact Calculator link at the App Advertising Hub. On the top right card, you can see what is your current spend on mobile traffic for your web campaigns. For example, 29.4% coverage means that 29.4% of your current mobile spend is flowing through Deep Links and into your apps, while the rest of the traffic is directed to the mobile web. On the top left card, you can see what is the missed opportunity from not implementing the missed Deep Links. In this example, by implementing the top 10 URLs, you could have gotten two to 3,000 more conversions and increased your deep link coverage by 12.5%. Similarly, by implementing all the missed deep links, you could have gotten 15 to 70,000 more conversions. Now let me briefly explain how this tool works. At a high level, it pulls all the web URLs from your web campaigns over a period of time, and then checks whether those web URLs are implemented as uplinks or universal links in your apps. This tool also lets you choose the period of time you want to pull the data from. Using the time picker, you can change the time which will affect the display data and recommendations. The bottom table at the tool contains up to three tabs. The first is the Android non-deep link URLs. Those are all the URLs that you should implement as uplinks in your Android apps. You can add filters to get the most impactful URLs that you should implement, segment each URL by campaigns, and download the table for offline use. For each URL, you can see the number of mobile clicks, mobile cost, and mobile conversions, and most importantly, the missed conversions from not implementing this URL as an uplink. Specifically for uplinks, you can also further validate this URL using the DeepLink Validator. Clicking on segment will let you see a breakdown based on the campaigns that are using each URL. The second tab is the iOS non-deep link URLs. And similarly to the Android tab, you can view all the URLs that you should implement as universal links in your iOS app. The last fully deep link URLs tab provide all the web URLs that are already implemented as deep links. You can also click on the download button at the top of the tool to download the full report that contains all the information and missed URLs. And lastly, you can filter the data based on Android or iOS, and that will change the information you see all across the tool. To summarize, currently your deep link coverage might be low, some of the deep links might not be configured correctly, or you might not have deep links at all. The problem is that your mobile users are not being taken into the app, and their experience is not optimal. We highly recommend you to implement deep links, preferably app links for Android and universal links for iOS. Use the new impact calculator tool to identify the missing deep links and the new validation tool to fix any existing misconfigurations. Use those tools frequently, which will increase traffic, retention, engagement, and provide better user experience for your mobile users. That's a wrap everyone. I hope you enjoyed the session today. We are constantly working to improve the tools and make sure both you and your users are having the optimal experience. Thanks for joining and see you soon.